This video is part two of a series that we're doing on RV Trip Wizard. And in this video right up here, that's part one, actually goes through and explains all the features of RV Trip Wizard. And in this video, we're actually going to plan our first trip. <music> Welcome to Tigner Adventures. My name is David and my wife Ninette and our little cat Tansy. We live in our RV full time. And today is the second video that's uh, talking about RV Trip Wizard. In our last video we kind of explained RV Trip Wizard in general. And today we're going to continue on by making our first trip. Now, before we get started, um, I still want to mention within the comments, there is an affiliate link there for RV Trip Wizard. If you're interested, uh, please uh, click on that link. We do get credit for that if you uh, use our link. Uh, but, you know, you can also just click on that to see this information to you or follow along with us as we go through this little step right here. So anyway, that's your option. Uh, we do appreciate the support. Now let's go ahead and dive into RV Trip Wizard and you can see that I've already opened this up and we are back to where we originally created our first trip and uh, now we're ready to start adding um, items to the trip. So normally the first thing that I do is I add my final destination and I want to make my final destination in this particular case Phoenix, Arizona. So to do that, I've typed in Phoenix, Arizona up here in this little uh, find window, all right? And so if I click here, you can see as I start typing, it fills in information that's kind of pertains to what I'm typing. But down under places of interest, you'll see that I actually have Phoenix, Arizona. And so I, you know, what I'm doing is I just click there. It actually takes me to Phoenix. And then in this particular case, I'm just stationed in the middle of Phoenix somewhere, okay? If I click on this more details, then at this point I can add in the name. In this particular case, I'm just going to say end of trip, okay? Now I'm not going to specify any nights here or anything. Um, I can specify if I want this, uh, like I'm going to specify a specific date, I can lock that date in. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it open. And I'm going to add it after, in this case, I only have one stop. So I'm just going to add it after that stop, which is um, Salt Lake City. So if I come down here to the bottom and say save custom stop, I can also put comments in here. I can, a lot of times if I'm putting a gas station in here, I'll put in the gas prices that happen to be the current price when I'm first uh, planning the trip. But you can put any comments you want there and I just say save the trip. And then if you notice over on the left hand side now it shows Salt Lake City is my first stop. My second stop is end of trip. It's 721 miles. Okay and it's going to take roughly you know 11 and a half hours to make that trip uh, in my RV based on my uh, mileage that I had that I specified which was 55 miles per hour or 50 or something like that and then the cost is based on my uh, price per gallon so three dollars and twenty five cents gallon of gas and I get five and a half miles per gallon so it came up with a cost there so now it's just that's my whole trip and if I come up here to the top that says show entire trip I can just click on that and you'll see that I am being routed down through Las Vegas and over to Phoenix. Now I don't really want to go that route but this is the way that it's putting it in there to start with. What I want to actually do is I want to hit over here in Colorado. I actually want to go to Durango first or at least as one of my stops. and. What I'm actually shooting for is this Mesa Verde National Park right here where my hand is kind of going back and forth. So if I come up here to the right and I click on the tent uh, that's grayed out here that we learned last time, this kind of toggles our campgrounds on and off, then you'll see that I have some campgrounds that kind of pop up right here all around Mesa Verde National Park. And I've got one here and this has got brown on it which actually correlates to um, a, a forest service park 
um, or a um, national parks uh, park. Um, there's other ones here that um, these dark brown ones, those are actual state parks. So in this case, we're in Colorado. So those are Colorado state parks. And then we have some other ones here that are whatever those denote to and things like that. So I'm just going to click on this um, one right here. And it's saying that it's Moorfield Campground. It's a Mesa Verde National Park Campground. And this little diagram of the campground, it's saying that it's 424 miles from where I'm at. And um, it's giving me all these different things. So these are all the things that it actually has. Um, and over here to the right is two dollar signs. Now if we click on this little question mark, it shows us that two dollar signs are somewhere between 20 to 40 dollars a night is how much it actually costs us to stay here. And we can actually click on park details. And so what, if we do that, it comes up and it actually shows pictures of the park. It gives us um, a lot of information over here uh, about the park itself. We have the features, we have reviews, we have tips and questions. We have a thing that talks about the weather. So let's just kind of talk in it. Let's just look at the features really quick. So these are the amenities that are available. They do have power. Uh, they have showers, sewer, dump station. Uh, they do have access for big rigs. And so this is the things that we're looking at. And But it's saying that our connective for Wi-Fi is, they don't have Wi-Fi in the park, but they do have these services, AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile. Those services are available in the park. So those are just features about the park. This is just information about the park for us to decide if that's really where we want to stay. In this case, there's not a large selection of options around there. Uh, but this just so you can look at multiple parks and make your your decision um, It also has reviews and so you can see what the actual reviews are in this case There's been 60 of them and they're getting a four-star rating as an average And then over here is tips and questions So these are just some information that you may want to be aware of before you actually go into this park And then over here is our weather and so this is kind of kind of nice um, this particular park is about 7,000 feet, so you know it's important to know what our weather uh, pattern is. So, for example, the highs, you know, like right now is about September, so our high is about 70s. But the later in the season we go, like uh, here's December at 36 degrees, so we definitely don't want to go here in December. So that's kind of nice to just kind of see the whole thing. It also tells us how much rain we're going to get on average. Uh, this is just all historical type data. So once I'm pretty sure that this is really what I want, then I can say add to trip and I click on this. Then it comes up here and it asks me um, on this screen, how many nights do you plan on staying at that particular location? So let's just say four nights. I'm not going to lock the date in. And then it says, well, where do you want this? to be within your list of uh, sites that you're going to. And so at this point, I want it to be after Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City is our start. We don't want to end the trip before we go here. So this is after Salt Lake City. So I'm going to click on Salt Lake City and I'm not going to put a comment in there right now, but I'm just going to say add my trip. So now you'll notice on the left here, I've got Salt Lake City. I am going to uh, Mesa Verde National Park and then I'm headed to Phoenix after that. So if I say show entire trip This is now what my trip looks like. So I want to go over here and toggle my camping off And you'll notice that I'm not going through Las Vegas anymore. I am being directed through uh, Moab uh, Utah and down into Colorado So that's great. It automatically moves my route for me. I don't have to do anything. That's perfect. And then over here, it's showing that the uh, campground is 363 miles from my Salt Lake location. And then from there, once I leave uh, that um, campground there and I head down to uh, Phoenix, it's 423 miles. So you can see that it's keeping track of that mileage for me. And so far, um, our total trip, if we look down here at the very bottom, is four nights and it's going to cost us $465. That's just gas cost, right? That doesn't count how much the park was because I didn't put a fee in for the park. 
so that's all we know right now. Now, some key things that have popped up on the map here. I kind of just move this map over a little bit. Is you've got this little red triangle, and if you look really close, um, it is actually a red gas pump in the triangle, meaning that if I leave Salt Lake with a full tank of gas, it's figuring by the time I get to this point, my tank held 75 gallons of gas, and I said I wanted a 25 gallon reserve. So by the time I get to this point, I'm going to have used up 50 gallons of gas, and I need to fill up by this time, is what that's basically saying. So let's go ahead and add a gas station in here. And if we look down here, we have, uh, I said we we're going through Moab. So we can look and see what uh, gas prices are. One of the things I like to do is go up here to this uh, filters option, right? And we can, um, or we can just kind of toggle on our points of interest. And you can see that when in our last video we were talking about our points of interest, we had different gas stations. You can see there's a Love's gas station right here in Green River. So it's like, oh, let's go ahead and get gas here. So if I just click on that, uh, this is the simple way of finding it. It's actually a Conical Loves Travel Stop. And I say more details, and I just say add this to my trip. Now, I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay overnight here at all. So all I really need to do is come down here, and we're going to make this stop after we leave Salt Lake and before we get to Mesa Verde. So I'm just going to say put that right there, and that's it. I'm just going to add it to the trip. So. You can see now on the left that I have come down here. I've gone from Salt Lake to here. It's 181 miles. It's calculated out. It's going to take me about three hours to drive there. And I'm not staying any nights. Okay. But let's go ahead and show entire map. You'll notice that over here I still have my red, you know, gas alert there saying I'm going to be out of gas and the reason is is because I haven't said I've filled up with gas and so what I want to do is come back up here to Conoco and I want to say edit and over here on the right it's saying when I get to Green River Utah I'm going to arrive I'm going to still have roughly about 42 gallons of gas and so when I leave I'll have 42 gallons of gas which we know is not going to get us all the way to Mesa Verde now one cool little thing about this is it does know that my maximum tank size is 75. And so I have two options here. I can either just put in 10 gallons of gas because gas is expensive here. And I'm just going to wait until I get someplace where it's not as expensive. Or I just fill up my tank. So for example, when I went through California and it was $5 and something a gallon, I only put in a few gallons just to get me across the border into Oregon where it was like $3.80 a gallon. So major difference in cost price. And so I only put a few gallons in. But in this case, I'm just going to fill up my tank. And so since RV Trip Wizard knows that my tank holds 75 gallons, <clears throat> I'm just going to type in, I can type whatever extra money here. And if I hit tab, it automatically drops that down to make it so that my departure fuel is 75. And so then if I save this, you'll notice that my gas can or my gas pump is gone right here. And I now have driven all the way to Mesa Verde. I've left Mesa Verde and I've got all the way over to here. If I zoom in this little town Mexican water. So <clears throat> I already have my point of interest turned on, so there doesn't appear to be any gas stations that RV Trip Wizard is uh, looking out uh, here. But um, if I right click here and I can create a custom stop or I can actually check fuel prices. And so that actually brings up this other tab, and you can see that the fuel. Um, and a Sinclair uh, is three dollars and eighteen um, cents per gallon for regular. Um, if I go back over to RV Trip Wizard and let's zoom out just a little bit and go over to um, Cortez, let's do that again, and we're going to say check fuel prices. 
And the fuel prices in in uh, Cortez is three dollars and thirty one cents. So usually, I try to get gas in larger uh, towns because they're a better price. But in this particular case, out here on this Indian reservation, the prices are actually cheaper than Cortez. So this little feature within RV Trip Wizard is really handy. I usually use different apps in conjunction with RV Trip Wizard to help me in planning my trip. But this is built in and it's just really, really handy. So I am going to go back over here to the Mexican hat or Mexican water area. And I'm going to do that check fuel prices again. And I'm going to say, if you look here, it's Mexican water trading post. So if I go back here to RV Trip Wizard, I have two ways I can deal with this. I can either put Mexican Water RV or Mexican Water look uh, Mexican Water Trading Post, and it brings it up. Um, doesn't look like it has the. This might be it here. Looks like that is it. Um, so if we go back over to the school price one. It shows that it's on Junction Highway 160 and 191. So I can always put that address in there um, and do my search in RV Trip Wizard. Or I can sometimes just put the name and RV Trip Wizard already has it, like in this particular case. So I can just click on it and it brings it up on my screen. And then I'm back to the same old thing that I was before. Now I'm just going to put this at the end of the trip because I want to show you a cool little feature here. Um, so I'm messing up. I'm not putting it in the right place. And so you'll notice that I now go from this campground. In fact, let me uh, show entire map. And I am going from this love station that's flashing on the screen right now. I'm going down to the campground. I'm going all the way down to Phoenix. And then I'm going all the way back up to um, Mexican water and so you can tell oh you know what that's in the wrong place but the nice thing is over here on the left I can just grab this and drag it to where it really needs to be so even if you mess up it's not that big um, of a deal it automatically makes those changes and saves those now one disadvantage to this setup that I would really love to see if, you know add a new feature here is that if you accidentally do make a change that you didn't want to for example I delete something because I was going to edit it, but then I actually deleted it. Um, there is no undo. And so it's, that's a little annoying because um, I have to go back in and enter it again. So it's really important to kind of pay attention to what you're doing so that you don't run into that particular problem. All right, so with that said, I now have to edit my stop and add my gas in here. And if I wasn't too clear before, um, when I'm adding my fuel, since Trip Wizard does know that my tank size is 75, I can just add 75 here. Instead of sitting there trying to calculate out that I need 49.59 gallons of gas, I just put some number big in there and it automatically fixes it for me. So I just wanted to point that out just in case there was some confusion there. But uh, anyway, now my gas is in there. You notice now that uh, I go from that location all the way down here almost to Phoenix all right and so I'm going to uh, just look for a place right here uh, probably actually let's just look at Flagstaff just just to do a quick little uh, thing uh, just to get this moving along so I've got Silver Saddle Center that 314 per gallon so let's put in Silver Saddle Center and see what we come up with here in our little search. So, here we go, Silver Saddle Center in Flagstaff, Arizona. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this really quick again. And all I'm doing is, um, in this case, I'll put it in the right place. So I'm going to put it after this last gas stop. And all I'm doing is just trying to get this done, and I'm just going to show you the features really quick. Um, and we'll just kind of finish this video up. So 
Again, let's just put 50 in here. That takes us up to 75. We only use 33 gallons. All right, so now you can see I have no more red gas tanks or anything. Um, I did just realize that the reason that's telling me that update failed is because I actually logged into this yesterday and just left this screen up and I'm just kind of finishing this video off right now. And so I really need to log out or at least close the screen and re-log in again and that's why it's not updating. So what I'm doing right now really isn't being saved and that's the little warning I'm getting. But for your, for this purpose, you know, we can at least see what's going on and I'll fix this uh, before we go on to the next piece. But you can see now that I have all my trip completely planned and I've got my gas stops in here and if I look over here on the left you know it shows me how long it takes to get to each place. Typically we like to travel no more than about three hours per day and so what I do is I look at this and I start seeing that uh, okay it's three hours to this point whatever we need to start looking for places to camp and so if we look at the first stop here we're going from Salt Lake City all the way to Mesa Verde uh, National Park it's actually about six and a half hours to get there that's way too many hours to be driving in a day and so what we need to do is we need to add a stop uh, between there and if you notice like in this particular case, our, uh, in Green River, is about three hours. So if we just look for some place that is fairly close to that by utilizing the campground uh, feature, then we can you know, either boondock or we can stay maybe in a Walmart or whatever the case may be, um, and we can just keep adding those into the trip until we break the trip down into little chunks that actually make it uh, usable uh, for us because we don't like to travel that far in one day. So, but with that said, that finishes our little map here, and we've done this little trip. And the next step is that I want to go through is tying this together with the app that's on the phone from RV Life. And so in the next video, I'm going to actually do that. So we're going to make this a three-part video just to kind of keep it uh, smaller segments here. But um, in the next video, we will talk about the RV Life app and how using that app we can actually navigate um, while we're driving and so that's our next step but thank you for watching and then we'll go ahead and bring that up for the next video and in the meantime we hope to see you down the road on our next video mm -hmm.